Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are going to blog about, well, I don't know, topics life. of life, topics life. of interest. Life. To we always blog about life. Everybody. And actually, this is the topic I, I never really tire of uh, speaking with you about, John, because unlike you, I've never really yeah. been successful with gardens. Maybe I just never really cared enough when I was younger, but you've been doing it <laughs> all your life. And quite, quite frankly, I think we've spoken offline about the fact that uh, I've had a, a fasc fascination with hydroponic ponics, uh, using water yes. instead of planting things in the earth and things like that. Yep. And there's a whole yeah. rhyme and reason for it. But uh, that's not the topic for today. The topic for today for me is, I know okay. that in the spring and in the summer, you're always, well, we, we get together at least once a month. Uh, and you're always bringing, uh, uh, I may have some of them wrong, uh, cauliflower and broccoli and cucumbers yeah. and squash and, and, but now it seems to be like, even in Southern California, a dark time for, for, uh, uh, picking produce out of the ground and you're constantly, you've got trees that are, they're sleeping now, <laughs> right? They're taking a, taking a nap, uh, for a while. Okay, I but, love your characterization. <laughs> well, really, they're 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 trees, and they nap. And the, the, yeah, the, they're trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, they drop their leaves and you know stuff like that. But, All right, where are you going with this? Well, where I'm going with this is that what do you got that I can look forward to in the next month or two for something grown out of the ground that you can share with me <laughs> for, yeah. for free veggies? Yeah. All right, so. I'm glad you asked, actually. First of all, I have to uh, correct a misconception. I grew up in, I believe you grew up in a family home, right? In Brooklyn. <laughs> it, what, not enough. Three story brownstone. I didn't grow up in a brownstone? home. <laughs> well, yeah. it was a brownstone, yeah. wasn't it? I, 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 yes, home. I lived in a house that had grass in the backyard and it even had a grapevine. You know what? That's more rural. Than where I grew up. I grew up in apartments all my life. Mm. And so when we finally got married and bought a house, that's when I got into gardening. And not because I knew anything about it, just because all of a sudden I had a backyard, I could grow stuff. Mm. And I discovered my favorite, quite frankly, was raspberries. We put them in the ground one year and they came back every year. It was wonderful. I, who knew? Who knew? You, you didn't have to do anything, you just yeah, pick them. Exactly. So with that, you learn bit by bit about different vegetables and various growing seasons and things like that. And um, and there's a couple of rules that I, because I love comparing, uh, I'll call it gardening, to life. Yeah. All right. There's a couple of rules about gardening that um, and the earth and and growing things that pertain to life. One of which I got the best piece of advice I ever got. Uh, I was working at Channel 11 in New York, and we were doing a gardening show, believe it or not, with the head gardener of the Brooklyn uh, Botanical Gardens. Yeah. He was a head gardener, wonderful guy, uh, Frank Bowman. And Frank said when we got our house, he said, whatever you do, don't dig anything up. Don't cut anything down for the first year. He said, just let it grow. Let it grow, and you'll see what's there, because in the springtime, you might find flowers over here. And in the winter, you might find something over there and you might find this over here. He said, you don't know what's under the ground. He said, so don't go crazy. If you want to plant something, that's different. But don't throw anything away until you've had a year's worth of observation. To see I mean, to see what goes. might come back annually. And find out and find out mm -hmm. what's there. And so that's the best piece of advice I ever got. Uh, but the other thing is that, um, you know, everything has a season. The birds turn, turn, turn. Everything has a season. And so what you try to do, what I try to do is plant stuff so that I have, I, I can enjoy something all year round. So now you mentioned cauliflower. Interestingly enough, I've got cauliflower for you. Here it is, ah, November, December. My favorite. And, and this is the, in Southern California, we can still grow stuff. So this is cool weather crops. I've got Broccoli is about to come up in a couple of weeks. We'll have broccoli for Christmas. 
The cauliflower is ripe. We just had baked cauliflower for dinner the other night. It's wonderful. Mm. I've got a head of cauliflower. I'm going to see you next week, I think. Yeah. And I'll bring some cauliflower. We've got avocados. I gave you some avocados right. a while and back. And Linda particularly loves yep. them. And you really grow great avocados. Yep. Um, and I've got some, um, what are they called? Tangelos. Mm. I planted a tangelo tree. So we've got, so in the grove, we've got, you know, the deciduous trees that are wintering. There are, most of them have lost their leaves already. Um, pomegranates, for instance, are gone. They're kind of a fall crop. But are you, are you saying the tangelos are still? The tangelos are, are just ripening now. Wow. And next month in January or so, January and February, we'll have the tangerines and the uh, mandarin oranges and those kinds of things, and along with Valencias and others. Now, in the garden, um, we've got cool weather crops that I planted a while back. We've got, uh, as I said, cabbage and broccoli, but also beans and peas like the cool weather. Hmm. And, you know, they're not going to they're not going to last all winter long. If we get a, a cold snap, they'll die. But that's OK. We'll get peas and beans until, it, you know, we get a cold snap. Hmm. And we don't here in Southern California, we don't really get, uh, you know, a lot of frost. But all it takes is and sometimes if we all we get is a snap uh, one night of cold, you know, they'll they'll winter through. They'll so you never know. But it's worth doing. It's worth planting. And my lesson for everybody is there's a season to everything. Mm. You've got to you've got to plan for each season. And if you're season now, if you're in the season that we're in art, which is that gray haired season <laughs> where, where the grandkids are screaming at you. That's that's a different different season to plan for. You gotta you gotta take care of yourself. You gotta plan for the next season, whatever it is. Mm. Maybe the next season is you know, I think of my my granddad's a broken hip. Oh, that was a terrible season for her. But you gotta plan for it. Right. And so I think uh, that's what I love about gardening. It's life. It's a little bit of uh, down to earth life. You can make an analogy to to everything we do, including. Winter crops. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to winter crops that uh, may come to my doorstep in just a, a week or so. I'm really yeah. looking forward to that. I particularly like your cauliflower because I make cauliflower steaks out of them and oh. uh, and grill them, and uh, they're quite good uh, for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, more the vegetarian vegan kind of lifestyle, and they. And you grow really great cauliflower. I mean, they're, they're not second rate. They hide it, hide them in uh, the supermarket kind of thing, yep. give them away. They're like upfront, really nice cauliflower. Oh yeah, they. They. I have to say, I don't know why, because I'm not a great gardener, uh, but we've been very successful with cauliflower and the broccoli. Not bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the last couple of years, uh, I would say that as a gentleman farmer, if, if that's fair, uh, you you've done quite well. You pay attention to it. You care about it. And uh, well, you know what? It's it's your hobby as well. I plant enough. I plant enough so I can share it with the gophers <laughs> and and the rabbits, you know. And what they miss, you share with your friends. Yeah. Uh, what do, I'll take whatever's left over, the, <laughs> the bounty. So anyway, everybody has a garden in their head. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. So we should all, so, so you're saying that we should all plan for our seasons because yes. we reap what we sow. Yes, and and Art, we, we looked up the lyrics to a song, mm. which, which uh, I'm gonna let you tells sing. us about the winter. The Do you have those in front of you? I don't have them in front of me, so I'll let you sing okay, them. Okay, let me, hold on just a second. Hold on, hold on, I got it here. All right, it's it's The Rose. By Bette Midler. popular by Bette Midler, but other two, other people have done it. Right. So my favorite line from The Rose is, is uh, and you think that love is only for the lucky and the strong. Just remember, in the winter, far beneath the bitter snows, lies the seed that, with the sun's love, in the spring becomes the rose. Perfect. Thank you. See you in the spring. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.